Be here. Mayor Castillo. Here. City Manager Dodge. Here. City Attorney Goring. I'm here. We have a quorum. Uh, Mr. Dodge, will you lead us in the pledge, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Uh, Ms. Dodge, how, how do you want to handle the order of things today? We have two items on the agenda, Mayor. I think it might be helpful if I have an opportunity to make the presentation on the budget. Please do. Vote. Okay. <clears throat> what you have before you this evening, Mayor and Commission, is the advertising requirements <clears throat> for the trim notice, both for the fire assessment fee, as well as the millage rate for the general fund budget and the uh, geo bond issue millage rate. <clears throat> the millage rate uh, is to be advertised in the trim notice and it must be sent to the property appraiser no later than Friday, August the 2nd. The advertised rate <clears throat> represents a cap. In September, the adopted rate can be lowered but not higher than the advertised rate. So whatever you establish this evening, that is the cap that you can go. The property appraiser will mail trim notices from <clears throat> August 12th to the 24th of uh, 24, and the trim notices reflect the tax amount based on the advertised rate. It also shows the date and time of the first public hearing, which is Wednesday, September the 4th at 6 p.m. <clears throat> the general fund is balanced, however, it does have a deficit that we will be working on during the month of August. And as you know, I sent you an email that uh, we'll have a budget workshop meeting on August the 21st to review all the line items. The property tax revenue is based on the current operating millage rate of 5.6690 and generates approximately $101 million. That represents a 95% collection rate in revenue, and it translates to 7.6 million year over year increase in the property tax budget. The value of each mill is 17,946,232 dollars. The general fund proposed budget is 272 million 168 thousand dollars. And the revenue categories are based on taxes, permits, fees, uh, intergovernmental revenue, charges for services, fines and forfeitures, and miscellaneous revenue. And the expense categories are of personnel, operating capital, grants and aids, and other uh, general expenses. Uh, within the budget for the next uh, fiscal year, there are new positions in the police department. There are being proposed two forensic examiner one positions, one economic crimes investigator, and two police service aides for code compliance. The contractual positions through FCS in the police department is one payables procurement specialist, uh, a recreation cultural arts department, one recreation specialist, Planning and Economic Development Department, one clerical specialist. <clears throat> and the general fund major capital items within the police department of 3.3 million. It includes 2.6 million, which are for police vehicles and related equipment for 18 marked vehicles, and 351,000 for Vanguard ballistic shields. In the fire rescue department of 2.8 million, the major items include 1.9 million for a fire truck aerial platform, which is part of our plan over uh, <clears throat> the replacement of equipment, and $435,000 for a new ambulance rescue unit. Within the technology department, um, we have the replacement of our Cisco switches of close to a half a million dollars. Public safety has 1.6 million of which 1.1 million are for generators and 
mini split HVAC units for our IT rooms for the protection of our equipment and $400,000 for the Polk building remodel for the secondary EOC and the recreation department and cultural arts of 828,000, 250,000 of that is for prefab bathrooms at the Craig Ruck dog park and 175,000 Silver Lakes North renovate soccer fields. As a result of the 8.39 increase in taxable value, the proposed debt service millage decreased by 0 0.0202 mills from 0.3410 to 3208. The associated 5.8 million revenue is budgeted in the debt service fund. And the aggregate proposed millage rate is 5.9898 which is 0 0.0202 mills or three tenths percent lower than the current rate. If you look at the impact of the median residential uh, maintained current operating millage, you will see on the uh, median priced home for the next fiscal year, it increased from $186,840 to $202,450 which represents an increase in the operating for the median residential unit of $84.06 and for the debt service, 1.17. And once again, there are homes that uh, really have no assessment on them, which means there would be no impact and half of the homes would be under the $84 and the others would be above. If you look at our 10-year uh, millage rate history, you can see that we've consistently either maintained it or have lowered it. And as you can see, the debt service millage based upon growth of uh, properties within the city has increased from 60 cents a thousand down to 32 cents a thousand. So the aggregate millage uh, is reduced from 6.01, which is the current fiscal year, down to 5.9898. So this proposed budget does reflect uh, a tax decrease. Uh, commission, uh, our recommendation is to approve the advertised millage of the current 5.6690. Uh, this would require three affirmative votes of the commission. Uh, if there are any questions or comments, and once again, it's for advertising purposes only. If in fact, once we advertise this rate, and when we get through the budget um, review in the workshop, uh, if there are any other issues, you cannot increase this doubt, this uh, ad valorem rate, but you can decrease it if, if there are changes that the commission wish to see in the budget. Mr. City Attorney, do you have anything to add about the budget process rather than the trim notice process? If I may, Mr. Mayor, thank you, and members of the commission. <clears throat> For those who have joined us on the commission dais, uh, there's a statute that governs the taxation that is just described in very nice, specific detail by our city manager. It's called the Trim Compliance Statute. It's in section 200.065 of the Florida Statutes. It's a stat which statute which runs about five or six or seven pages. It also guides not just the administration, but also the finance department, our finance director, and how the millages are actually uh, provided for <coughs> and otherwise. In this city, under our charter, both the millage ordinance and the budget ordinance are ordinances, they're not resolutions. The statute refers to resolutions or ordinances. You will see in September two ordinances, for first reading and second reading, <coughs> one of which is for the, the millage rate, which you'll confirm on first reading in September at the first public hearing, September the 4th, and there'll be a second and final public hearing to approve the millage and the budget. For the record, the statute understands and contemplates that the millage drives the budget not the opposite, budget doesn't drive the millage. So the millage is the premise on which you get to an ultimate budget. Um, also, for the record, um, this city is in compliance with the timeframes required. So if this evening when you approve the tentative millage, preliminary millage, which, which will be sent to the property appraiser, um, that, that information gets inset, inserted into the trim compliance notice, which are sent to every taxpayer in the city and in the county, countywide. <clears throat> The end result of which is, is that the, uh, the city is in compliance with the statute. There are certain very specific advertisements which the city clerk's office 
and the finance director and the city administration work towards, uh, which requires specific information to electors, people who are voters certainly, but also those who are taxpayers, which have to be considered. Um, at the moment, the, the description based upon the proposed millage that's been offered this evening uh, would require, uh, this evening's preparation requires only three votes. Ultimately, what, what vote count is required in September will be dependent upon what rate that you establish, and to that extent, that'll be described to you during the course of the hearings in September uh, that will be scheduled. Uh, all hearings are public hearings under state law. Any member of the public has a right to be heard on the budget, and all budget hearings are required by state law to occur after 5 o'clock. You can't have a day meeting to establish your budget, and you can't have a budget and tax hearing which conflicts with a county commission public hearing or a school board public hearing. All the dates which have been established by the city administration are consistent with Chapter 200 and do, they do not conflict with any other governmental agency that's not allowed to be in, in conflict with in adopting the city's budget. Uh, that's, the, that's the quick primer on what it looks like. Uh, this statute is a bit convoluted only because of the fact that it deals with the formulas, uh, not just for cities but for counties, for special districts. All taxing authorities have to comply with the statute. And this city has been consistently in compliance with 200.065 and we hope to be so in the, into the future as well. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Any questions? <clears throat> Just one. Um, Mr. Manager, what's the, you had mentioned we're at 5.6690, which from what I see on your document, it's basically, it's flat for the last three years. That's, that's correct, Commissioner. Now the aggregate millage I mean, obviously, depending upon what we vote on here, the aggregate millage, 5.9898, is, I'm going to ask you to do math here. That's a significant reduction from... The uh, <clears throat> aggregate millage represents debt service on a voter-approved debt service issue. Right. Anytime new property is added, it increases the... Um, amount of revenue coming in and since debt service is fixed um, in order to generate the same level of debt service we have to lower the millage rate so when you do the aggregate you look for the ten, last 10 year history it continues to go down well that's my point it's actually if you if you look at the percentage from 2015 16 down to 20 24 25 there's a I'm not very good at math, I apologize, but that percentage reduction, I'm just saying when you speak to, well, when we speak to residents uh, on the commission, if someone could do math, I don't know, Lisa, um, if you could look at that, but that's... You want, you want to know the percentage over yeah, the last please. 10 years? Uh, I think Lisa has her calculator. She can do that. It's probably just to be able to say, you've seen a reduction over the last 10 years of when you combine the operating and the debt service. Mm -hmm. The debt service has come down significantly from 0 0.6017 to 0 0.3208 if we adopt it tonight. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of what I'm saying. I'm not as, I'm not in the, I'm basically saying messaging for residents, explaining to them that there has been a reduction overall. That's correct. I didn't mean to put you on the spot, I'm sorry. I think they're working on their calculator. It doesn't have to be now. When she tells, when she has. Okay, okay we so four percent. Four percent. Okay, perfect. Thank in, you. In the military. In the, in the military. military. Okay, That's perfect. Great. Other questions? Will somebody please move uh, SM two, and then we can talk about SM one. Mr. Mayor, may I read the record, if you will, Mr. Mayor? Sorry? May I read into the record the title? Yes, sir. Thank you. With your permission, Mayor and Commission, item number SM1 is a resolution regarding the fire assessment, which also must be delivered to the property appraiser by Friday. And for the record, it's a proposed resolution number 2024R-24, which is a resolution of the City of Pembroke Pines, Florida. Uh, Mr. Attorney, I, yeah, I'd, right, I'd, like to to move, I'd like to move uh, SM2 first, since so we just had that discussion, and then we'll have... Understood, Mayor. Yes. Military. And for the record, Mr. Mayor, the uh, the motion on the printed agenda is a motion to establish a millage rate to be advertised in the trim notice published by the Broward County Property Appraiser due on Friday, August the 2nd, in accordance with Section 200.065 of the Florida Statutes, and the motion needs to include the number. And that motion is consistent with the uh, with the presentation by the manager. 
Do I have a, do I have a motion? Motion to approve. Moved by the vice mayor. Second. Seconded by Commissioner Rodriguez. Any further discussion? Uh, mayor. Commissioner Schwartz. Uh, thank you. Uh, back in April, um, I had asked uh, administration to uh, work with labor to get a deal done. Um, I asked again at the budget visioning session to get a deal done. Uh, we still have not gotten it done. Therefore, I don't have all the information necessary to approve uh, the trim notice <coughs> this evening. So I'll be um, voting no. Forgive, forgive me, Commissioner. Could you do something about the mics? I'm yeah, hearing I this can't echo. Hear you. I, well, I'm having trouble hearing. I'm having trouble. Uh, there's an echo in the in the microphone. An echo. An echo. Did the audience have any issues? I couldn't hear. Okay. Do you so have I'm, it on now? I know we had to reboot the system. Reboot the system. <laughs> Testing. Better. Mr. Commissioner Schwartz, if you if you could again. Okay. If can you hear me, or is it still bad? Yeah, okay. You okay? No, yeah. it's the echo, not the not 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 the volume. Yeah, I don't think it's him. It's just the system. The system. Okay. Yeah. Um, April and May, I asked administration to get uh, labor taken care of. Uh, we haven't been able to do that. Um, I said that if we couldn't get it done, I was going to be voting against the uh, trim notice because I don't have enough information. So I appreciate the motion, but I'll be voting no this evening. Uh, Ms. Dodge, where do we stand with, uh, with labor? The, um, the negotiations is a process. Uh, yeah. We're still involved in it. Um, the HR director is uh, trying to have a second meeting with uh, labor. Uh, we should probably have an answer are hopefully close to it before the second and final reading on the budget. And would would the would the millage rate that uh, uh, the, that that's reflective of the trim notice today have any bearing on uh, on that cost or on those negotiations? No, the uh, negotiations and the amount that uh, was discussed in executive session as a consensus, uh, those monies have been included in this budget. That's also included in this millage rate, Commissioner. Anything else? Anybody else want to speak on this item? Anybody from the public? Madam Clerk, will you please call the roll? And Mr. Mayor, just for the record, the millage is being motioned for this evening is at 5.6690 mills, correct? Which represents a, a, a decrease in the millage rate from the previous year. Thank you, Mr. It Mayor. It includes the debt service. It includes the debt service. Ad the advertised, advertised. Advertised rate. rate. Advertising. Right. Advertised rate only. Yes. You may call the roll. Vice Mayor Good? Yes. Commissioner Rodriguez? Yes. Commissioner Hernandez? Yes. Commissioner Schwartz? No. Mayor Castillo? Yes. And by your vote, the trim notice rate is established. Uh, Ms. City Manager, SM1, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, this is SM1. It's, it's a motion to adopt the fire assessment proposed resolution number 2024 R-24, which for the record is a resolution of the City of Pembroke Pines, Florida, related to the provision of fire rescue services, facilities, and programs in the City of Pembroke Pines, Florida, described in the method of assessing the fire rescue assessed costs against assessed property located within the City of Pembroke Pines, directing the preparation of an assessment role, authorizing a public hearing, and directing the provision of notice thereof, and finally, providing for an effective date, date item SM1 on the floor for consideration. Thank you, Mayor and Commission. Can SM1. we have a motion, please? Motion to approve. Vice Mayor moves the item. Is there a second? I can second it. Commissioner Hernandez seconded. Uh, Ms. City Manager, do you want to make a presentation on this? Uh, well, chief, Mr. Mayor, the assessment uh, was part of the <clears throat> previous presentation. It basically uh, establishes the 100% cost of fire services within the city. If you look at the uh, 
backup that we have on the agenda, there is a uh, roughly a $40 per year increase that's being proposed. We're recommending you advertise it at that. However, there's also verbiage in the agenda item that the uh, fire chief and the department has recommended uh, a change in the fees for fire inspections. Uh, if in fact that goes through you know, on first and second reading uh, between August and September, uh, this fire assessment rate that we're asking you to advertise would be decreased by $6.39, uh, which would bring it down to about $33 increase. And that funds the fire department 100% for fire services only. But not, not for uh, rescue services? No. Yeah. Uh, the assessment has nothing to do with rescue services. So only this fire is for service. fire only? It excludes the rescue costs? And that's pursuant city attorney to state statute? State statute and case law that this city was actually engaged in in, 19, in the late 1990s. Okay. Any further discussion on this? Anyone from the dais? Uh, Mayor, if I may. Commissioner Schwartz. Um, I would like to have the administration uh, for first reading uh, in September uh, to have a five-year forecast of capital. I did speak with the chief some time ago. Um, we had uh, Chief Piccarello had given us a uh, forecast from 2013 to 18 what the projected fire fee was going to be, and it was extremely helpful comparing from one year to the next where we were. We always came in under budget, under forecast, and I think um, it's, it's a good opportunity now for the next five years to kind of see where we're going. So if, if we could just get a, um, at the first uh, hearing in September to bring forward a, uh, a forecast for five-year capital improvement. I know we've done a really good job of the last three to four years with engines and, and that sort of thing, but I think we need to look beyond uh, short term and go out a little bit further. Chief? Good evening, Marcel Rodriguez, Fire Chief. Uh, that, that won't be an issue, Commissioner, or we'll provide you with a five-year CIP at the uh, 1st September uh, yeah, meeting. Do, do your best. I mean, it's, uh, we're, we're, we're really on good solid footing. I know that we have um, the equipment that we've, that we've brought in thus far, and mm -hmm. I do appreciate what you did last year by moving some equipment around so that we could find a, uh, a path forward to, to get some things done. But the men and women who work for us, they, they do expect to have uh, the best equipment available. And as such, uh, those who are being treated by them also get the benefit of that. So if we can just kind of take a look at where forecasting is going. I know there's uh, manufacturing challenges in the civilian uh, world. I, I imagine that there's probably some technology and some limited vendors now uh, within fire. So I just kind of mm -hmm. want to be ahead of the game if we have to get something now versus later on in the future where it may not be available. So I just want to be able to uh, put some money away early so that we can uh, do what was necessary to keep us all safe. Absolutely. We'll have the 41st uh, meeting in September. Thank you, Chief. Anyone else wish to, wish to be heard on this item? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Vice Mayor. Yeah, I just uh, a brief question on because I know that uh, this is only for fire. Do, are we from aware of any past legislative attempts to include rescue? The answer is, uh, go ahead, Mike, All right, please. The answer is yes. I'm going to give you just a, a, a two-minute expl explanation because this was a litigated issue and went to the Supreme Court of Florida, and this city was part of that litigation. My law partner and the deputy city attorney, Mr. Cirillo, would like to join you in that brief discussion. Good, good evening, Mike Cirillo, city attorney's office. Um, yeah, back when it originally um, contemplated back in 1997, it did include EMS. And there was litigation both with Pines and North Lauderdale and several other cities at the time. And ultimately, the decision was made by the courts that you could not include rescue as a component of the special assessment, only the fire and traditional fire services like first response. So anything that's EMS related, um, that's purely um, like, say, a heart attack or something like that, those have to be, and those costs of that service has to be removed from the budget. And we can only assess for the fire uh, protection portion of the fire department's budget. And the EMS portion is from other revenue, other sources. Mike, and my understanding was that that was because uh, the fire service protects property, but um, um, 
uh, rescue does not. Is that, that, is, that how, is that what the decision turned on? Yes, because uh, special assessments have to have a special benefit to real property and be fairly apportioned. So um, the courts basically said that you, take, you have to take out the EMS component because that's not a benefit to the property itself. Vice Mayor? Yeah, and what was the basis of that? Was that because of, uh, of a, an existing law or uh, just a general interpretation by the courts on their own merits? It was an interpretation of the courts. There was a statute that listed it at, that you could assess in Chapter 170, and it might actually still be listed in 170 as available. But the court said that even if you list it in the statute, you still have to meet the two prongs of a valid special assessment, fair special benefit to property and um, um, fair apportionment. And interestingly, in Pembroke Pines lost to the trial court level, but then was reversed, and we, were, and we ended up winning at the appellate court level that we could have included EMS. We never went back to it because at the same time that case was going on, North Lauderdale had a case going with the same thing. Because of our court ruling at the appellate court, the trial court said, you're fine. But then when the same appellate court got it just a year later with the same question, they reversed themselves and said, no, you can't include EMS. And then that was affirmed by the Supreme Court a couple years later. So ever since about 2001 to 2002, that law has been settled. Right. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. Anything else on the fire fee from the dais? Anything from the public on this item? Hearing none, <coughs> clerk, would you please call the roll? Vice Mayor Good? Yes. Commissioner Hernandez? Yes. Commissioner Rodriguez? Yes. Commissioner Schwartz? Yes. Mayor Castillo? Yes. Motion passes. The recommend Mayor and Commission, the permanent number for the record is number 3873 for item number 2024-R-24. Thank you, Mayor and Commission. Thank Does you. Does this complete our business? Yes. Meetings adjourned.